Barbara is helping a friend prepare for her wedding. They're at a little town up in the mountains, and Dave is supposed to take a bus and join them later. And there's a lot more going on here than a wedding. Do you think Uncle Rex will like Dave? He'll love him. And if I know my great big old cuddly Uncle Rex, Dave will get the job. Dave, a vice president. We'll all be so proud. Vice president of what? Who's Uncle Rex? And isn't Dave already a successful lawyer? Is this something Dave wants or is it something you want for you? I mean him. He's not coming up in that rickety old car, is he? <laughs> Uncle Rex saw Dave in that. Oh, no. He promised me he wouldn't drive up in the border. He gave me his word he'd take the 10 o'clock bus. I should have taken the 10 o'clock bus. Does anybody in this universe understand the concept of a classic car? I met a guy about three days ago who drives one, and I have news for Barbara and Marcia. People don't laugh. They gape and drool. And since I was there, I can tell you it was the same in 1965. That's one of the biggest problems with this show. People don't react to the car in a believable way. If Uncle Rex has any class at all, he'll be admiring the car. That's assuming Dave and Mother can get there. She's having engine trouble, and they just ran out of gas. You better put some antifreeze in there. You're sure going to need it. Okay, go ahead. While he's doing that, Dave calls Barbara to let her know he's on his way. In the porter. She says, well, if you must, at least park in the back where nobody can see it. Gotcha, honey. I'm on my way. Bye, honey. Hurry, but be careful. <laughs> Bye, honey. Bye. <laughs> Your three minutes were up. Do you, mind? Do you mind if I have a little privacy? The laugh track isn't helping because this guy isn't funny. He's obnoxious and rude. He and Dave will clash several more times before Dave gets to the chapel so everybody knows who he's going to turn out to be. Hello? Yes, Marsha's here. May I tell her who's calling? Tell her it's Uncle Rex. That's right. We won't even save it for some kind of reveal later on. We'll let the viewer know now so they can see all the ways Dave is torpedoing his chances to get the job. Frankly, if Dave even wants to work for that guy, he's goofier than the show makes him out to be. David, for heaven's sakes, watch where you're going. I am watching. Stay on the road, will you? That's better. Better, you're all over the road. The antifreeze was pure alcohol and she's drunk as a skunk mobile. Now, the seat of her consciousness seems to be the radio, but if you're waiting for somebody to explain how the antifreeze got from the engine up to the radio, I hope you packed in lots of food because you're going to have a long wait. We'll watch Dave insist that he's not drunk, even though he can't come up with an explanation for why he was weaving like that. It won't occur to him to suggest that something was a little weird in the steering or some such. He'll just keep saying, I'm not drunk, which of course makes him sound drunk. They're ready to haul him in, but Dave says, I'm a lawyer, I know my rights, and I demand a sobriety test. Forget it, mister. You're too south to take the test. Well, I know my rights. Josh, let him blow up a balloon. The orange one? <laughs> Been meaning to ask you, Sheriff. What do you do with them things? Judge Payne takes them home to his kids. They're supposed to take them to a lab and attach them to a breathalyzer. Handheld breathalyzers hadn't come along yet, but the idea had been around since 1874, with the first practical one being invented in 1927. Since cars weren't ubiquitous yet, the main use was for wives to tell if their husbands were coming home drunk. Some wives actually needed a machine to tell them that. By 1965, they were used regularly to provide evidence in drunk driving cases, but as these cops are trying to do, standard practice was to haul the driver in and hold them until the breathalyzer results came back. As we're seeing here, that led to a lot of missed weddings. Want to walk the straight line? Yeah. Oh, take my advice, copper, please. Uh, I insist on walking the straight line. All right, be my guest. Now, here's the same thing backwards. <laughs> huh? No, one foot, watch. Later that year, our deputy moved up in the world. He relocated to Hooterville, got a job as county agent, and changed his name to Hank Kimball. It's obvious Dave hasn't been drinking, so they have to let him go. 
Besides, they have other things on their minds. <laughs> other things like some arrogant slob who likes to announce that he's speeding as he goes past the police. Mom is still plastered, so Dave stops at a little diner along the way. Coffee hot and black, please, and plenty of it. You got something to put it in? <laughs> Fill her up. You want me to put coffee in that? Yeah, it's empty. <laughs> she watches him pour the coffee into Mom's radiator and calls the sheriff. What do you mean my coffee tastes like rust removal? <laughs> yeah, especially after it's been in that can. This time, they're determined to take him in and let him explain it to the judge. I'm on my way to a wedding and a very important meeting with the president of International Utilities, Mr. Osgood. Not Rexford P. Osgood. <laughs> That's Uncle Rex. He knew he made the uncle. To us, he's Rexford P. Osgood. Ain't he a caution? I demand my rights. I'm entitled to a phone call. You made a call. Sure tough luck you got a wrong number. Look, you ignorant hicks, I'm a big, important executive with money and lots of people somewhere that isn't here or afraid of me. Therefore, you should be too, even though you don't me from any other egotistical city cloud who comes up here trying to throw his weight around. How can you not grasp that? Look here, Sheriff, what's it going to cost me to kill that bribery charge? <laughs> That's up to Judge Bean. You ready to see him now? Not until I get a lawyer. Uh, can I make my... Can't you see we're busy, boy? <laughs> Every place I go, you're there making trouble. What are you, some kind of agitator? These are the jokes, folks. Yes, sir. Now, I've had just about enough from you, boy. I want a man from the city. I'm from the city, sir. One more <laughs> word from you. And I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer? <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? You've got to speak up, boy, if you want to get ahead in this world. I can't do it. I just don't find this kind of thing funny. Uncle Rex is a bully. That's not funny. It never was. I may get expelled from the good old boys club for this, but I can't stand the Three Stooges. I never could. As a child, I thought Mo was the meanest person in the world, and I hated the way he treated the other two guys. From then on up to the present day, I'd see people watching those guys and laughing uproariously, and I never figured out why they were laughing at a guy who's so mean to his friends. I still don't get it. But I have a feeling Uncle Rex is going to get it from the judge. Let's head over to the barber shop and find out. Hear ye, hear ye. The First District Court of Kingsville County is now in session. <laughs> Judge Bean presiding. Please rise. <laughs> Be seated. <laughs> I'll spare you some more unfunny jokes and just tell you the judge is the barber, not the guy in the chair with the suit and tie. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh... You sit down, son. <laughs> you got something to say, sit down and say it, boy. <laughs> You'll get a shave while you do, whether you want one or not. Dave explains away the charges, including one for destroying public property. After he blew up the balloon, he popped it. I repeat, these are the jokes, folks. Well, boy, you've made some interesting points, but I can't give you my decision right now. <laughs> How long will it take? Oh, about as long as it takes me to give you shampoo. Oh, yes, one of the charges was attempting to bribe an officer. Apparently, the judge is the one you're supposed to bribe. My husband, Dave Crabtree. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dave. and congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Gee, I'm sorry about Uncle Rex. He didn't even come to my wedding. Oh, yeah, I know. I ran into him on the way. Uh, he was delayed, but, but he asked me to give you this check. Oh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> Barbara asks how he ran into Uncle Rex. I'm his lawyer. I defended him on, on a bribery charge. How wonderful. When am I going to meet him? Uh, like on visitor's day. He's in jail. I lost the case. Dave made it to the wedding and has everybody's approval. The most important part of Uncle Rex is money made it to the wedding. Uncle Rex gets to cool his heels in jail because Dave didn't provide a good enough defense. That old saying is true. Every cloud really does have a silver lining.